What up, what up, what up, gang? This is not a podcast. You already know it's just my thoughts for Rob Markman. Now, today, Double XL released their 2024 annual freshman covers. All right, it features Lay Banks, Maya the Dawn, BX the Plug, Huncho, Skiller Baby, Cash Cobain, that Mexican OT, Richard Mary, Bossman, D Lo, Four Bats, and Scarlet. All right, so you already know every time this cover comes out every year, there's debates online, there's a lot of, um, criticism about who was left off like double xl like they take a lot of bullets and they take a lot of heat um it's gonna spark debate it's gonna spark criticism um fans who are super tapped in know who all of these artists are right um and some fans just aren't aware of all these artists and that's okay like as a fan it's okay to exist in that space of i like what i like um it gets kind of crazy to me. I, I kind of look at people side eye when I see people who work on the industry, like who work inside the industry, inside media, inside music, be like, yo, I don't know half these artists. Like, that's crazy. It's literally your job to know who these artists are, right? You know, I, I'm over at Genius. So we've worked with a bunch of these artists on our, on our shows. Lay Banks, we have an episode coming out. We shot that a while ago. It's coming out either this week or next week. We shot with Maya the Dawn, um, Skiller Baby, Cash Cobain, Boss Man D-Lo, Four Bat, Scarlet. So, you know, th these are artists that are moving around. Um, the list is cool. Like, I, I'm I, I'm thinking of who else I would have put on it. Like, maybe Tommy Richmond. Like, definitely Tommy Richmond off of the success, right? But, one, this was shot months ago. I don't know that Tommy was on anybody's radar. And then it's like, how do you really classify Tommy Richmond, even though Double XL in the past has put... Um, you know, R&B singers like Anderson Pock has been on the cover before. So maybe Tommy Richmond, um, Caribou, Anicia. You know what I'm saying? Those are some of the names. But, uh, you know, look, outside of everybody's going to be like, ah, I would trade this one with this one or do that one with that one. But uh, just looking at it, it's a pretty solid list. Like, I can't find a lot to complain about. So it's going to create healthy debate. That's good. Healthy debate is good, I, I think, because it helps fuel traffic for the cover. It helps fuel exposure for the cover if people are talking passionately about it. So there's nothing wrong with that. But I just wanted to add a little bit of perspective because, you know, I used to work at Double XL um, and really at the beginning of the whole Double XL freshman movement. So at least I, I could speak about where it started. It, you know, it might have shifted and evolved. It definitely evolved since then. But I want to keep something in perspective as we have these debates. No matter how you feel, right, I got to shout Double XL for continuing to provide a space where 10 new artists can get some light. You know, I'm, I'm going to do a video about this later, but we're seeing places. I also used to work at MTV News, which has shut down their whole site, took all of the, the articles are off the web. All the stuff we wrote, all the videos we did, all the interviews we did are off the web. Like, there, there are fewer and fewer places like publications where artists can really get light for being artists like so the double xl freshman cover is something that i still salute a lot of the stuff at least that i grow grew up on just doesn't exist anymore right so i mean just some background right so i used to work at double xl officially from 2008 to 2011 double xl was owned at the time by harris publications technically i worked there from 2007 to 2011 prior to double xl i worked for a magazine called scratch magazine which was like the sister magazine to double xl so instead of putting the rappers on the cover they would put the producers so dr dre was on the first issue i think kanye was on the second issue Khaled had got some covers high tech had got a cover um, Premier and Nas had got a cover. Um, cool and Dre was on the cover. Timbaland was on the cover with 50 Cent one time. So, you know, that, that was Scratch Magazine. It was the magazine for the producers and Double XL would like the magazine for the artists. So I started working at Scratch in 2007. That same year it shut down. I, I was only there for a couple of months, maybe three issues. And then in 2008, I started working at Double XL. Um, I was, so I was working at Scratch Magazine when the very first Double XL freshman cover happened because the source had kind of a freshman concept years, like in the late nineties, I think it was, um, pun, um, um, uh, what's my man's name for no limit. Oh my God. Silk the Shocker. Silk the Shocker was on it. I, I think maybe Lord Tariq and Peter Guns. It was a couple of people, maybe DMX. So, so the, the source had kind of like a freshman concept, but it never took off, but at 2007, when I was working at Scratch, um, the very first Double XL freshman cover happened. Elliot Wilson was the editor in chief at that time. Um, that was the one with Plies, Papoose, Saigon, Crooked Eye, Joel Ortiz. I remember being in the office 
early one one day and I was one of the first ones there. It was maybe like around nine o'clock in the morning and Elliot was in there and, and he had showed me the cover. Yo, check out this thing that we're working on. Um, so that was the first double XL freshman cover. Then after Elliot got let go that same year, or maybe it was like the next year, it was a couple of months after that Elliot had gotten let go. Daytuan Thomas had became the editor in chief of double XL. And it wasn't a guarantee that there was going to be a freshman cover. It wasn't like when Elliot left, like there was this blueprint or, or more so a mandate that, yo, next year you have to do a freshman cover. Um, it could have gone either way, but I think that they Twan being a fan of that cover, even though they say it didn't sell, I'm, I, I don't know what the numbers are. Being a fan of that cover was like, nah, we got to run it back. We got to do this freshman thing. And I remember Day Twan really pushing to do the freshman cover in 08. Um, and that was the one, and, and I was here for that. I was on staff. That was the one, if y'all remember, with Wale, on the B.O.B., Charles Hamilton, um, Blue, Corey Guns, Mickey Fax. Um, you know, I'm going to put this on, on screen to you. You don't have to see me flip through it. Currency, Ace Hood, Kid Cudi. Um, so, you know, this was like after Elliot, the, the next freshman cover. And it was like, yo, this was going to be a thing. I remember this one was on all the blogs. Like, now, nah, right, the cover had leaked. You know, a lot of these artists were were, were blog era artists. So so the internet picked up on this real fast. Um, we were super proud to do it. I was at the shoot. The shoot was amazing. Um, and then a couple of months later, Daytuan is no longer at Double XL. And Vanessa Satin takes over as the editor-in-chief, and Vanessa Satin is now currently the editor-in-chief of XXL. If I'm not mistaken, she's the longest tenured editor-in-chief of any hip-hop magazine ever, right? So by next year, Daytuan's no longer there, and Vanessa Satin, who's the EIC, she took over, um, and if I'm being honest, and, and, and this is why I'm coming to why, why we got to salute XXL. At that time, XXL and, 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 the people that were running Harris and and just didn't believe, and maybe Vanessa herself, I, look, I was there, we might debate this, but at the time, XXL didn't believe in the concept of the freshman cover as a business. So after this, after this one, y'all might not have gotten another freshman cover. It was a big debate in the office whether or not XXL should do another freshman cover after this one. It was a huge debate. Um, I was on the side like, yes, we absolutely have to do it. But what was the next cover? What would we have lost out on, right? The next cover had J. Cole, Pill, um, Nipsey Hussle, rest in peace, Wiz Khalifa, OJ the Juice Man, Freddie Gibbs, Big Sean, J. Rock, for Sean, and Donis. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, this J look, J. Cole, Nipsey. Wiz, I mean, Big Sean is on, on the back. Like, Freddie Gibbs, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so we, we might not have gotten this cover if if the business side of the argument won. And and here's how, how you know. So the, so the freshman cover is an annual thing. If you look at this cover, it has a date. You can't zoom in, but it has a date of December 2008. That's the cover date, December 2008. So conventional wisdom would tell you the next cover would come December 2009. And, and just because it had the way magazines worked and still work, just because it said December 2008, we shot this in August. I think this hit stands in September or in October. So the date, the magazine is always out way before what the date is. But what I remember distinctly, like we shot this in August, um, maybe September, but cover date, December 2008. Um, so the next one. April 2010. That's how long a whole 12 months went by and Double XL didn't do another freshman cover. We fought to get this done. And not only did we fight to get it done, when the year came and the freshman cover didn't happen, the internet, the fans were saying, yo, where's the freshman cover? To the point that the powers that be at Double XL had to put this out. Now, this freshman cover, again, I, I, I was here for this one too. Um, and this, fun fact about this one, you know what I'm saying? Um, this is the one, you know, J. Cole's on the cover. This is the day, the day of this shoot is when J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar met for the first time. J. Rock is on the cover. So TDE is in attendance. Kendrick comes to the shoot with J. Rock. And this is the first time that he meets Cole. Kendrick isn't like, I know you see this shot, but Kendrick is in the background 
of all of this. And if you listen, those fans who really be listening, go back and listen to the heart, the first heart, right? The lyric is, I was at the double XL just trying to excel, networking. Meanwhile, my stomach turning, wanted to be a part of it, catered to my audience. J. Cole running late. If he don't show up, think I could take his place. Lady started laughing, no pun intended. I ain't being sarcastic. Homie popped up with about 20 bags, fresh out the plane. I couldn't even complain. My was on his hustle. I introduced him my name, said I see him on the bubble in the future. My dude, I salute you. Um, so this is the first time they meet. Is, is, is right here it's crazy so what happened was and i was there cole we knew this going in too cole was in miami i remember distinctly cole was in miami and he he couldn't because i'm the one who called actually like the staff decided we decided we want to call on the cover and then it was like well who has the strongest relationships who's going to reach out who's going to help coordinate and i'm the one who called cole direct and was like, yo, we want you on the cover. I, I remember at the time, he was like, I don't know, man. Like, I remember him thinking it was like, if you play John Madden football, it was like the curse of the John Madden cover, where if you was on the cover of John Madden football, something you might get an injury or something like that. So Cole, it wasn't like a yes right away. Like Cole was hesitant, but Cole did the cover. And he was, he was scheduled to be in Miami the day before. And the only flight that he can get was that morning. And then his flight got delayed. So we knew Cole was going to be late. So Cole came. Everybody was there mostly the whole day. Cole came late to do his part of the interview and shoot his part of the cover. So Kendrick is like, oh, he's running late. Well, hey, I'll take his place. Put me on the cover. And I remember thinking, and that, and that was the day that I met Kendrick too. And, and, and when I really started becoming in tune with his movement. And it was something about him. And I, and I was like, yo, he's going to be here next year. You know what I'm saying? And sure enough... On the next cover, he was there. Meek Mill, um, Kendrick right there in the middle. Lil B was there. YG, rest in peace, Mac Miller. Rest in peace, Fred the Godson. Sci High the Prince, Yellow Wolf, Lil, Lil Twist, and Diggy Simmons. I'm um, all on this freshman cover. And this was the last one that I did. Um, you know, after this one, I did one issue of Double XL after this, and then I went and I took a job at MTV. Um, and so. You know, these are some of the most still like impactful times of my career. I remember what it was like to to be a part of these covers, to select these guys. And and when I was doing it, you know, when I was on the staff doing it, it was never to troll. We never thought like, yo, let's troll people. Yo, let's get make people upset. Like, you know, we really were trying to pick 10 guys and, and women who, who we thought had a shot. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Big Crit was on this cover too. Pardon me if I didn't mention Crit. But 10 artists who we thought had a shot. Um, 10 artists that, you know, we knew the fans. Like, you're not going to be fans of all 10 artists. But but you'll find somebody on this cover that you like, that you can champion. And yeah, I haven't been at Double XL since 2011. So it's been several, several years. But I, I think it's the same thing today. I think it's like, it's not about liking or loving all 10 artists. It's like, who can you champion? Like, there should be something for everybody. There should be somebody that you love on that cover. Um, and, you know, again, Double XL gets a lot of shit. I, I remember um, somebody writing an article saying that um, Def Jam paid us to put YG on the cover because YG had just signed to Def Jam. But My Crazy Life hadn't come out until now. Nah, like... Def Jam didn't even hit us about YG. We we I, I remember me specifically the reason I wanted YG on the cover was for Tudor and Booted. Like I remember just watching that on YouTube. One the impact that song had on LA, but that was one of the first big videos on YouTube when I was like millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of views. And I was like, nah, this is crazy. Who's this? So we reached out to them for YG. And and I remember an article saying, Oh, we got paid, we took payola. I've never seen no payola, at least again, when I was there. Um, so, you know, you get criticized, man, um, for doing it. But, I, you know, I think they really try to pick 10 artists that that represent the culture. And you should find something that you like. I mean, and even after I left, right, like you got to give XXL their love. I mean, 21 Savage is, is, a, is a former XXL freshman. Lil Uzi, Anderson Pac, Schoolboy Q, Absol, Jack Harlow, Chance, Glorilla, Polo G, French Montana, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like they're legit stars that that appear on this cover, and at the time, they were stars in the making. Um, you know, now it's real easy to say, yeah, 21 Savage, of course, we all knew. 
And a lot of people didn't know because 21 Savage had a wave. He wasn't a nobody when he appeared on the freshman cover. But, you know, it took Double XL to stamp him and say, nah, we believe in him. We want to give him some light. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, look, will all 10 artists on this year's cover make superstar status? No. The industry doesn't support 10 new superstars a year. Like, it just doesn't happen like that. Like, there's, there, there's just not enough resources or room or... or, or whatever in the industry to support 10 superstar artists a year um you know even yg appearing on this 2011 cover it, it, my crazy life didn't come out to years later it, it it looked like a smart decision a couple of years later when yg eventually got to where he was going um you know same same with mac um you know with fred you know rest in peace i i, I think people didn't really really get to appreciate fred's talent until after he passed rest in peace fred the godson um, you know, meek, you know, um, so it takes a couple of years. Sometimes it doesn't happen in that calendar year, but you know, I, I do think we got to salute them. Be critical. Like, like do the arguments, do the debates. Double XL wants you to do that. I know they want you to do that. It gets them traffic, but let's also kind of look at it and reflect and be like, damn, at least there's still a place that will give 10 artists a shot every year when all these publications are closing, when all these publications are shifting direction, um, I'm here to salute Double XL. But that's just what I had to say, man. That's just my thoughts on the matter. Please um, like, please subscribe, please comment, because you know I'll be in these comments with you, all right? Peace.